This time we're going to look at quadratic inequalities. And here's a good example of how to do that. Um, notice that when we're dealing with quadratic inequalities, it looks just like a quadratic equation. It has an x squared term, an x to the first power, and a constant, just like you see in a quadratic equation. The only difference is instead of having an equal sign here, you have an inequality sign. So the best way to deal with this is to first factor the left side if it's factorable. In this case, it looks like it's factorable. We can write it as a product of two binomials. And so we write an x and an x. Notice if this is negative and that's positive, that means both of these must be negative. When you multiply a negative times a negative, you get a positive, and when you add them, you get a negative. And you're looking for two numbers. When you multiply, you get a 2. When you add, you get a 3. That looks like a 2 and a 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, and a minus 2 times a minus 1 is a minus, or a minus 2 plus a minus 1 is a minus 3. All right, now you go ahead and write the equivalent equation of that inequality. With other words, you write the very same thing, but you write an equal sign there. You write x minus 2 times x minus 1 equal to 0. The reason why we do that is we want to find the critical points of our solution, meaning the points that uh, delineate or give us the boundary of the sets of solutions. So we solve this as, a, as an equation, and since we're multiplying these two things and we get 0, that means we have x minus 2 must equal 0 or x minus 1 must equal 0. And then if we solve this for x, we get x equals 2, or we get x equals, and something doesn't look right, this should be a minus right here, not an equal sign. And so when we move the minus 1 across, we get a plus 1. So here are our two solutions to this equivalent equation, which means those are the two boundaries of the regions of our solutions. Those are what we call the critical points of our solutions. So we draw the number line, we find the number 0, we put on some of the other numbers, 1, 2, 3, Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Here's a number line. We find these two points on the number line. And since we don't have an equal sign there, only an inequality, that means that those two points do not belong to the solution. So we draw little circles around those points. One around the point 1, one around the point 2. And now notice that on the number line, we have three regions. We have a region to the left of number 1. So we label that as region 1. We have a region between 1 and 2. So we label that as region 2. And then we have a region to the right of the number 2, which is region 3. Now, any one of these regions could potentially be the solution to this inequality. We don't know yet which ones. It could be 1 or 2 or 3 of them. Although, after a while, you start to realize that it's either 1 or 2, not all 3. Then to find out which region does belong to the solution of that inequality, you're going to try some test points. You're going to pick a point in each of the three regions and plug it into your original inequality to see if that belongs to the solution. So let's start with region 1 and we're going to try point 0. So let x equal 0 and plug that into the inequality to see if that makes that a true statement. So now we have 0 squared minus 3 times 0 plus 2 is that less than question mark 0. And obviously, if this is 0 and this is 0, we have 2 less than 0, and that, of course, is no. Which means I picked a point in a region that does not belong to the, to the solution, so I can go ahead and eliminate that as a possible solution. I now take a point in the next region, of course, there's only a few points we can grab here. How about one and a half? So we'll try, let x equal 1.5, and we plug that in the original inequality. So we have 1.5 squared minus 3 times 1.5 plus 2, and the question is, is that less than 0? Well, 1.5 squared is 2.25. Minus 3 times that, which is minus 4.5, plus 2, is that less than question mark 0? And if we add all that up, we get, uh, let's see here, minus 0 0.25, less than 0, question mark, and the answer is yes. So here we found that when we picked a point in region 2, we found that that is actually part of the solution 
So we can go ahead and indicate that by making that a little bit more solid. Now we try a point in the third region. So let x equal, let's pick the number 3, plug that into the original inequality. So we have 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 2, is that less than 0? So we get 9 minus 6 plus 2, is that less than 0? And it looks like that's 11 minus 6, which is 5, less than 0. And the answer is no, which means that this region is also not part of the solution, so we can eliminate that. And so finally we can realize then that all numbers between 1 and 2 satisfy this inequality, and none of the other numbers do. That's the solution.